respiratory protection. Um, respiratory is included in there for two reasons. One is if you use respirators, you have to have a written program and you're required to have medical requirements for employees using respirators. Uh, you have maintenance and care instructions, meaning you don't want to throw them on the dirty work vest and leave them like that. Fit testing and voluntary use. Those are, that's the part of the respiratory protection that mostly gets cited. And the reason I want to bring that up is if, if you have employees that wear half mask cartridge type respirators, A, if they're required to wear those, then you have to have a written program. You have to have medical clearance for those employees to wear those. You have to have fit testing, meaning that they fit properly. Um, and you have to make sure that they keep them clean and sanitized. When they're done using them, clean them off, put them in a sealed plastic bag, put them in a cupboard. You don't want to just hang them up on the dusty side and they get covered in dust. Now, that's if you do not, are not required to have your employees wear these types of respirators, but you have employees that wear them just because they don't want to breathe in the dirt or the dust or whatever. There's no requirement that they wear it because your limit, your exposure is very low or under the limit or there's no toxic substance there. The problem is, if you cannot just let employees voluntarily wear these types of respirators. They may not be physically fit. That's where you get into the medical testing. So, a dust mask, you can. If an employee wants to voluntarily wear a dust mask, they could do that without medical fitness and so forth. They don't need a medical clearance to wear a dust mask. But they need medical clearance to wear a cartridge type or a full face. But the problem is, if they're not required to wear them, you're, it's more of a hassle to have a program in place voluntarily for cartridge type. So if you don't require them, you can always go with the N95 dust mask, other than signing a piece of paper that's voluntary, that says here, you're voluntarily wearing it. It comes right off the OSHA website. So that's why it's, this, why, this is why this area is one of the highly cited. It's because people voluntarily wear cartridge type, but they don't meet the other requirement, the medical requir clearances. They just give them to the employees. HASCOM, everybody here is HASCOM. I don't want to get much detail, but again, requires a written program, but basically says who's going to be responsible for labeling, what kind of labels you're going to use, what kind of, what's your list of hazards or list of hazardous chemicals. So what, what is cited related to HASCOM is no written program, no list of hazardous materials, basically a list of them. Um, your SDS sheets, you're missing some. If you have a hazardous chemical out in the shop, I should be able to find the corresponding SDS sheet in your file somewhere. Labeling system, what kind of labeling system are you using? What kind of hazard identification are you using on your labels? And training, again, training your employees. You have to train them on, you don't have to train them on every hazardous chemical in your workplace, but you gotta train them on this area. Basically, here's a chemical we have. If I need information on it, where do I go? Well, you go to the SDS sheet. Here's how you read an SDS sheet. Here's where you find them. Here's the information presented on them. That's what you have to train them on. Um, but again, HASCOM, unlabeled spray bottle, unlabeled bulk containers, common sense. You know, at least should have the hazard and the name of the account on it. Um, and I know they fall off. You put stickers on, they fall off. Well, then try to find some ink that writes on there. It, has, it doesn't have to be a purchased label you could write on there. You have a 55-gallon drum of a hazardous chemical. You know that's all labeled. It's sitting in your storage room but you don't use it right out of the 55. You put it in these spray containers or you put it in other secondary containers. If that secondary container is gonna be used out in the shop where more than one person uses it, it has to be identified and labeled. It at least has to minimum have the name of the substance on it and what the hazard is. That's all. So from OSHA. No, not from an OSHA. No, not a secondary label does for a secondary container. Power industrial trucks, that's another big area that gets cited all the time. Well, what gets cited is lack of training. That's what gets cited. There's a big regulation. Yeah, you got places that may use a, a non-rated vehicle in a hazardous atmosphere, but that's very seldom. What usually gets cited is the employees aren't trained and certified. Whether you have, a, like you asked, a small business, if you look at forklift training, that's the number one cited hazard. They weren't trained and certified. Then I get asked, well, it's gonna cost me X amount to have these people come in to do the training. Look, for forklift training, OSHA doesn't require you to use a third party certificate vendor. You could do the training yourself. You just have to have classroom hands-on, then um, 
an evaluation. If you have someone competent at your place that knows forklift trucks, they could do the training. You could get online and download the forklift training classroom part free of charge anywhere from YouTube. So there's your classroom. Then you take your hands on, you basically go out in your shop and say, okay, here's what we do. I want to see you do it. And you go over forklift safety first. You go over the pre-trip inspection. Here's what you need to look for. Here's how to operate it. Then you, you show them how to operate it. Then you have your employee perform a road test, if you want to say. And then you have an evaluation form. Based, you could make it up yourself. It doesn't matter. Just based on what you want them to do. Well, the classroom training, that practical hands-on, and that evaluation together is your certification. That's their training. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to know that you do for your training. Then it has to be done every three years. Now, you don't have to do all three things. You just have to reevaluate them every three years and document it. So that is okay for you to do it yourself? Yes, you could, so you could do it yourself. There is no one that says you can't do it yourself. You could get on OSHA website. They have training videos. Work with your consultation. If you ask me, I'll send you training, forklift training PowerPoint presentations you could use. I can't come in and do it for you, but I can send you everything and all you do is you do it. As long as it's it, both classroom and practical and you do an evaluation, that's your training. And whoever does it should be competent, meaning someone where I could ask questions and they should know the answer to. The difference between a forklift and this and that. Now again, if you have different types of forklifts, when I say different types, you know, stand up, sit down. Uh, side mount, they have to be, if your employee is going to drive, operate more than one of them, they have to be certified on each different type. The classroom and stuff would be the same, but the evaluation, that's the separate part of it. So, and you don't have to issue cards, you don't have to do anything like that. You just have to train them and have documentation showing that you trained them, that met these requirements. So, that's the basis for forklift. Yes, if someone falls, if the forklift tips over and someone gets hurt, what OSHA cites for is lack of training. I'm telling you right there. That's why it's number one. Does that include like scissor lifts and things like that? No. The forklift 1910.178 only applies to fork powered industrial vehicles, forklift, material handling. Does not apply to aerial lifts or scissor lifts. If you have a scissor lift, there is no OSHA regulation that says you have to have certification required training. Would I train my employees on how to use a scissor lift? Yes. But OSHA doesn't say you have to. You know why? Because it's considered a mobile scaffold. So you're That's why. The other top 10 item is eye and face protection. Again, simple, common sense. Walk into a shop, someone's doing grinding or something, they have regular street glasses on, no safety glasses. But, or they're doing some grinding and their sparks and uh, stuff and they only wear, they only have safety glasses on where they should have a face shield. So that's where flying eye and face protection becomes number one, one of the top sided is because they're not, the employer's not providing the appropriate type of face, eye and face protection for the job tasks they are doing. If you're working with a chemical and you could get a splash, safety glasses aren't going to help you because the splash is just going to go in behind it or go up and under it. That's where you need a full face piece or a goggle, depending on what the chemical is. That's why this is one of the number one sided, not top 10 sided hazards in general industry, is that the employer is not providing the appropriate safe eye and face protection. And this goes back to your question, when you go and do your hazard analysis, your PPE hazard analysis that's required to be in writing by OSHA in a sense, you take this checklist, you go out to your job Say, okay, what are the hazards with this job task? Well, it's a chemical splash, which is very corrosive. Okay, that's the hazard. What's your protective measure? Just don't say safety glasses. Safety glasses aren't going to cut it. Uh, goggles with full face shield, um, that would cut it. So you'd write that down. Then you'd be specific. If you have a certain vendor you're using or a certain type, write down the type of... Um, the name and brand of the glasses or the goggles and stuff. That's what we like to see. That's, a, that's a, an evaluated hazard assessment that's precise. That's what we'd like each employer to do. And I know no one has time to do that, but that's what, that's what we would like to see. Um, that's it. That's the top ten.